Welcome. This is Birth, baby. Your hosts are Sierra Morgan and Samantha Kelly. Sierra is a birth doula, hypnobirthing educator, and pediatric sleep consultant. Samantha is a birth doula, childbirth educator, and lactation counselor. Join us as we guide you through your options for your pregnancy, birth, and postpartum journey. Hey y'all, now that you have a better idea of our backstories and our births, today we're going to talk a little bit about how we each started our journeys of birth work, how we met and decided to become doula partners, and why we're filling your ears with a podcast. So first I'll start talking a little bit about how I got my start. I was actually a project coordinator at a civil engineering firm when I had my son and I was working part-time right after I had him. And I had a guy at my work, I'm just going to throw his name out there. I'm going to send this to him afterward. His name was Rick and he was my work dad. It was kind of our joke that he was work g to my kids and my work dad. And he decided that I was just not meant to be there anymore. He, he would come by my office and be like, you were meant for bigger things, Sierra. You were meant to do different things. And I'd be like, what do you think I need to be doing, Rick? And he'd say, I don't know, maybe you need to be a lawyer or whatever. So he would walk by my office every day and because I was on the way to the kitchen and he'd go, hey, counselor, hey, doctor, hey, nurse. And he would just like throw random jobs at me as he would walk by me. And one day I told him that I was going to go to hypnobirthing training and that I'd be flying out to Florida for a four-day intensive program. And he cried. He's like this. He's like, I've been praying for this. I've just been praying that you would find your path and that you would do what you're supposed to do. I know. So sweet. I I know. And he goes, I love having you here. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think that this is what you were meant to do. And so I went to this four day intensive program in, it was in Florida and it was for hypnobirthing training to become an educator. And part of the training is for, um, going into the birth world, like, you know, birth work and uh, childbirth education. And then there's a separate part that's for hypnosis in birth and certifies us to be able to use hypnosis for the pregnancy and birth. And so I came back after four days and I was just on fire about it. I loved it so much. And I even like came up with my business name while I was there. I was like sitting in these classes going, empower is used a lot in the scripts and hypnosis and throughout. And I was like, and I'm helping people with the beginning of their journey, you know, their child's beginning of life, their beginning of parenthood. So empowered beginnings became a thing there. And I even bought my website domain while I was there. Um, Of course you did. (laughs) (laughs) What? You think you know me? (laughs) Um, Yeah. And so then I came home and I immediately started finding people. I was just in mom groups trying to find people that would want to learn about hypnobirthing. And I found our first client. I don't know if you know this, Sam, but my first hypnobirthing clients were our next twins coming up that are being induced next week. That, That's uh, awesome. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. Those parents hired me for hip- private hypnobirthing classes in their home and they had their first baby with me. They were not going to hire me for doula services, but I actually told them I think I gave them like a severely reduced rate if they wanted me for birth because I really wanted to have my first hypnobirthing experience with them, which was so cool. So I told my boss, look, I want to be able to one day a month call in sick and just be able to go to births one day a month. And he goes, okay. And I said, are you going to be okay with that if I take one birth a month? And he goes, well, I mean, it sounds like that's the only way I can keep you. So yeah, <laughs> he goes, you lead the you lead the man, the meetings on Mondays. What what happens is a Monday, and I said, I don't know. You're gonna have to figure it out. So I started with that. It was gonna be one day a month, and then I started getting. You know, this is like a blessing from God. I did not market. I did not do a whole lot, but people started throwing my name out there, and I just met the right people and talked to the right people. I guess. And I started getting emails and phone calls for people wanting birth or birth doulas and for hypnobirthing classes. And I, I really couldn't believe it. And I realized that if I just took two births a month, I could replace my income for part-time work. 
And I thought, wow, I'd be home with my kids more. I wouldn't have to like worry about in the summer putting them into programs. And I said, well, I asked my stepdad because he would watch my son every day from 8 to 12, basically, while I went to work. It was super close to where they lived. And we call him a stay-at-home grandpa. And we, um, I asked him, hey, how would you feel about instead of Monday through Friday, 8 to 12, watching my son, how would you feel about just being on call two days a month? And then watching him, I think at that point it was Tuesdays and Fridays. He watched him Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings. And he goes, is that what you really want to do? And I said, yeah. And he goes, I, I'm, I support it. Let's do it. It's like, okay. So he dropped everything he was doing two days a month to be with my son. And I put in my notice at work and I was really nervous about it because yeah, I could replace my income, but I also had to make sure I was finding clients. I quit my job and three weeks later is when I was finally done. And in those three weeks, I had booked out for four months. Amazing. I couldn't believe it. I was like, okay, there's my little sign that I did the right thing. So I loved it. I My stepdad loved being able to be on call and spend all that time with my son. By the way, my son was like, gosh, he was one and a half when I was doing this, when I started this. And so I I think it was six months after I got home from hypnobirthing training is when I ended up quitting my job. So I had my first baby in, I think it was May 11th of that year, quit my job in September. And by January, I was going, okay, I'm turning away a lot of work. And everyone kept telling me, you need to hire other doulas on your team. You need to hire other doulas. And I was like, that just feels weird. I didn't start this work to be giant. I didn't start this work so that I could just make my company as big as I could and help as many people. Yeah, I wanted to help people, but I wanted to help people. I didn't necessarily want to be mentoring and doing all of that. And finally, I just said, all right, screw it. I guess I am going to have to add other people to my team because I was getting so much work coming in and they wanted to do hypnobirthing classes with me, which was great. But then they wanted a doula that was able to help them as well. And I wasn't it. I couldn't do it. So I decided that I would add doulas to my team and I would um, make them take my classes. So even if they weren't hypno doulas, they still had taken my classes and understood how to support somebody who was. And then who did I add to my team? Maybe Samantha Kelly. Was it me? It was was you. How did you decide you even wanted to do that though? Because I actually don't even know that answer. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I kind of came about it, I guess, opposite of, of how you did. So I decided that I wanted to be a doula and that I wanted to do birth work. And then as I was getting ready to do my doula training, I found that my doula trainer also offered a childbirth education training um, at like a discounted price. And so I was like, well, what? I mean, that'd be kind of cool to be able to also do childbirth education you know, for my own clients and kind of, uh, I guess, you know, boost my resume a little bit and uh, do all of that. And so I did my um, childbirth education training at the same time that I did my doula training. Um, But I decided that I wanted to kind of focus on the doula stuff first. Um, So I I had been nannying for uh, many years at this point. Um, I was home with my kids and uh, I wanted to be able to continue doing that, but I also really wanted kind of something to call my own, I guess, for any, you know, stay at home moms, you might identify with how that feels. I, you know, I was giving so much of myself to my, to my kids and my family. I wanted to be able to, um, you know, just have something that was, that was for me that I was doing that was growing myself. Um, and so that was kind of how I got into the, or, you know, I guess started my own thing. Um, I started booking clients on my own. Um, I think I had my first interview the week after I finished my doula training and I booked that client and, um, and then I kind of just went from there. So for the first few months I was on my own, I was booking, you know, client clients pretty slowly. Um, but you know, as a, as a doula, you know, you, you, 
hire clients or you start working with clients at the beginning of their pregnancy and then you have you know months and months of working with this client before you ever actually attend a birth and i was kind of i was like itching to go like i was working with these people we were working on their prenatal uh you know their all of their birth plans and their classes and doing things like that um but i had not yet actually attended a birth um so i and that's so hard that's yeah. so hard when you're booking new clients for them to go, well, how many births have you attended? And you're like, well, I have like seven booked. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I haven't gone to one yet. Exactly. Exactly. So for me, I guess a, a little bit of background on me is I, I, I grew up um, in the church and community has always been really, really huge for me. I have always just really valued having a community around me. So one of the first things I did as a doula was I found a doula community that I could join. That was like, that was, I felt like I couldn't be successful unless I had a community of other doulas around me. And so I joined this uh, doula community here in Austin. And um, through that, I started meeting other doulas. I you know, got together with people and we got coffee and I just started learning from other people how they did things and, um, you know, how they were booking clients and all of this. And um, through that, I met you. I met um, I met Sierra and I, you know, we. I think I don't even really remember how how we like first connected. I know it was in the group somehow. I think um, I made a post saying that I was yeah. open to adding people to my team because oh, that's right. one of our other doulas actually contacted me from California, seeing that I had, uh, she actually posted in a group, the birth professionals group in our area and said, Hey, I'm looking to join a team or something. When I get there, is anybody doing that? And so I commented, that's all I did was comment and say, Oh, I'm actually considering adding to my team. And then she, we talked while she was still in California. And That's she ended right. up not even being the first one that I signed on because she wasn't moving here yet, but it kind of opened the door for me. And I was like, well, I guess I'll post in our, the dual group you're talking about. And then I think you reached out to me from my post on there saying I was like happy to interview people to see if I could find a good fit. Yeah, I think you're right. I do remember that now when we, we did like the Zoom interview and I was so nervous about it. Same. Um, <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, it was so weird. And, and then um, yeah, I think we just kind of started working together. You started, I started doing interviews with clients through you. And then I remember my very first birth ever that Me I too. actually attended was <laughs> a backup birth, which I feel like is fairly typical. Uh, I, I don't yeah. think that's an uncommon thing to have happen, but it was a backup birth for one of our good friends actually. And she, um, you know, I, it, it was like, I was going to go labor sit for her for a few minutes, uh, cause she had something else going on. And then all of a sudden mom was nine centimeters and I'm like booking it across town to get there. Um, and so that was my, that she was my was first so thankful birth for you. I remember saying Sierra, how many births has she been to before I gave her your number? And she, I was like, well, I don't know that she's been to any, but she's had two of her own babies. And she's like, I need her, just send her. It's like, okay. So you went and it was, I was so glad you got to go to that birth um, because it's like, you finally got one on your belt, you know? Yeah. And how do you even know if you like this work? You're booking so many people in far in advance, but how do you even know if you like this work unless you've yeah. actually been to a birth? And I, I remember and when I came people, home from yeah. that, my husband said that he was like, so he, he was so nervous. He was like, so how, how was it? What did you think? And, and then, you know, I was like, oh, it was amazing. That's the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. And <laughs> he's like, oh my gosh, thank God. Cause I was so nervous that you were going to hate it. And that we had just been through all of this for nothing. And I was like, no, I love it. I want to do more. And that was, you know, famous last words. Cause here I am just an absolute birth nerd <laughs> for, and taking all the yeah. babies. And so. as, and as an agency owner, when you're having people, so I don't know if some of you might not know how it works. So basically somebody signs on as an independent contractor, you're not an employee, right? I can't guarantee that someone's going to have five births a month or something, which that's too many anyway. Right. Um, but you know, I t told Samantha, I told anybody else who, who signed on. Cause at one point we had quite a few doulas and I've purposely kind of weaned off of adding people to my team because I kind of like the smaller atmosphere, but I would just say you're an independent contractor and I'll let you interview. So leads come through me. 
I kind of filter through them and see who I think might be a good fit based on what they're needing. And then who has availability for those dates, because even if somebody is a good fit, they might not have availability and then set up, okay, here, here, doula, here's this person's information. Please reach out and interview. So as that agency owner, people ask all the time, how many births has she been to? What's her experience like before they even want to interview with somebody? So it just is very hard if you're like, uh, none, you know? And so it was nice for you to get that one under your belt and then- And then be like, okay, and she also has this X many people, you know, booked out. And so you were taking births on your own and with me Mm -hmm. because that's totally fine. As I, you know, some agency owners have it where you can't do that or you can't work with multiple agencies, but I didn't have any rules around that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I always said my goal is to fill my books on my own, but I want to fill in the gaps with, um, you know, with some of the agency births. And so I think at the beginning, all, the majority of my clients were coming through the agency. Um, and then I kind of slowly started filling up my books on my own. Um, and I think it was right at about the point where I was filling up my books more on my own. And then, um, and, and, you know, we were, I, I was still taking agency births, but it wasn't as many. And that was when I remember you called me and said, kind of just, it was totally out of the blue, at least in my mind, it was totally out of the blue. And you're like, Hey, I just had this idea. What would you think about a partnership? And I was like, what? Like never no, even occurred to me. Oh Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, like when, when I have an idea, I have to sit there and I have to think on it forever. And you were just like, I had this idea. I want to do it right now. Let's go. Yeah, that was, basically. That was where this like whole thing kind of came from was that one phone call. And I think I said I needed to to think about it. And we kind of mulled it over for a little bit, but it really wasn't very long. We decided pretty quickly that that felt right to both of us. Yeah. So I remember thinking, all right, I... I had actually really started limiting my birth. So I was always max two a month because that's all my stepdad could watch my son for. And by the way, my daughter too, he was having to navigate getting her home from school and things like that. So, um, and he was pretty young when I started this work, my son. So I, I remember thinking, all right, well, I can only take one or two a month and some months I only do one. And it was really starting to weigh just heavily on my family because this birth this birth work takes a village and my poor husband would be like do you want to go to a concert on xyz date our favorite band is going to be in and tickets are two hundred dollars and that's a big investment i'd be like well yeah but i'm on call and if we wanted to go to his family reunion in california which is every other year that's a full week that we're gone. Well, when you're in birth work, some people don't realize, you know, we're on call from 37 to 42. We're always on call, but from 37 to 42 weeks, we're really on call. We're not Mm -hmm. supposed to be out of town. And so either I had to tell people, Hey, I'm going to be out of town for a portion of your due date range. And you are going to have a backup doula during that time. Do you still want to hire me? Or I just have to take off that giant chunk of time and have no one that's due within 37 to 42 weeks, which is a big hit to your income. So I remember thinking, all right, I just, it's going to be really tough. Do I want to try to do a partnership with someone or do I want to just keep doing what I'm doing and try to do way more childbirth education classes to supplement my income? But as much as I love teaching childbirth ed, I really love being in it and I feel that I'm a better educator when I'm going to births because things are always evolving and changing. Definitely. Yeah. That's a huge part of it, I think. So then when I thought about it and, you know, as an agency owner too, when you have independent contractors, you make sure that you're helping process births afterward, you're answering questions, they text you while they're at births and ask questions. Not that you ever really needed me, but it's nice to have a sounding board to say, hey, this is what's going on, or this person's being told this at their doctor appointment. I think this, what do you think? Like, is that your experience? And it's just that hive mind being able to, just like you said, you liked to meet up with people for coffee and see how they build their business. That is so much more valuable than any training you can take. You should do a training, but you also have to have other people around you. And when I say mentors, I don't just mean people who are older than you or have been doing it longer than you. Because I would say that you've been one of my mentors as well, because we're both good at different things. We both have our strengths. Right, right. Yeah, I mean. 
we would talk about your births. And when mm-hmm. we would talk about them and then I would get the reviews back from clients because I always send out little evaluation forms and ask how you did and with everybody. And I thought, wow, she and I work really similarly. And when I would hear you comment about things that were happening and like the things you were passionate about, I was like, oh man, <laughs> me too, girl, me too. So I just thought if we just went into a partnership where every other week, basically we were on call and we could cover for each other's kids' birthday parties and our you know, our anniversaries with our partners, then maybe we would be able to sustain this work long enough because a lot of people don't realize birth workers burn out in two to three years usually and they're done yeah. and that's all they can do. Because yeah. it's so hard on our relationships. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think uh, both of us were really feeling that when we started this partnership. I, th- I think it was it was fall of of last year. We were both like kind of almost in the burnout, but also able to recover because we had each other and we could yeah. take time off. And you know, I got COVID, and then you got COVID, and then our kids got crazy. sick, and we didn't yeah. have to stress about it because, yeah. you know, I think that probably, I, I mean, I don't know for you, but for me, I think that whole experience of, of you know, the, the COVID and then my kids being sick and then all these things happening, like all at the same time would have, I think that probably would have led to my, my burnout and not being able yeah. to really take any more clients, but because I had you to rely on in that time, uh, and you know, the same for you, you, you had yeah. almost the same identical situation happen. And yeah. And then a couple of weeks ago, my son yeah. woke up at 1130 PM throwing up and I text you and by 3 AM I had a text back. Don't worry. I've taken call, you know, yeah. and that is so huge. And our clients are not upset about it because right. they are getting one of the doulas that they knew that they were hiring. And we have had a couple of people when we've interviewed be like, can I pick one of you? And we're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> because it just won't, that's not why we do this work. We yeah. do prioritize our past clients. So if we've already had a birth with somebody, especially if it was outside of our partnership, right? Um, I don't think we've, we haven't had a partnership double up yet where, you know, mm-hmm. we're having another baby with them, but we've had quite a few of both you and I's past clients before our partnership say, yeah. Hey, I'm pregnant. And then we make it a priority to be at those births. And that kind of yeah. messes with our schedule a little bit. Um, you know, but when it's that, doable, it's great. Yeah. 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 And I really, I remember when you said that you needed to think about it and I was like, I'm kind of glad she's saying that because I wasn't a hundred percent sure either. And we both wanted to kind of have our own autonomy, still have our own business Mm -hmm. names. And we just talked it out. We met at a little tea and coffee shop in our area that is so awesome. And we just sat there talking about logistics. And I think the biggest thing too, is we both trusted each other already. Right like right. the money thing and figuring that out was so easy because we both trusted each other already. I honestly now saying this, here we are on our podcast. I'm going, I don't even know if we ever had a contract about how we pay. I don't think we have no, a payment No, and I've thought one. about that a couple of times. If this was anybody else, like anybody <laughs> looking in at our situation would be like, um, I, I don't know y'all. <laughs> Not smart friends, but it's worked and we're it's, doing We're fine. doing great. Yeah. Um, but I remember when you were like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay. I'm so nervous. And I was talking mm-hmm. to my husband. I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, well, you could always stop. And that was our thing too. We said yeah. we could always book for a few months. And then if we're feeling like this isn't working, we're going to stop tar- taking partnership clients. Yeah. So, um, and I even did a poll. We have a little mm-hmm. families group on Facebook that people can join into if they've ever had a baby with us or are having mm-hmm. a baby with us. And I did a poll in there, like, if this were the setup, when you hired us, would you have still hired us? And what, have, like, what would have been the pros and cons? Would you have needed more information? And I kind of explained what the situation would have been before we ever yeah. did it. Because I, I don't wanted think to you sure. really had anybody say no either. I think everybody was like, yeah. Nope. And there was one person, I think, that said they just would have needed more information. Yeah. But you know, what I have found, and I think you would agree, from the people that hire us, with this model, I feel like they are like, they have more boundary holding Mm -hmm. for us. They really value us. They value our personal lives. Um, Knowing that we have set this boundary for ourselves kind of sets a precedent on we are human too, and we don't want to burn out. We want to be able to provide you with the best doula possible. And so tell people a little bit, Samantha, about like, in how it works, right? Like why it would benefit people. Why do you think it benefits people? Yeah. I mean, so 
as a solo doula, when I was taking clients, I, I mean, I was at the whim of the world, right? You know, I, I was, I was a doula in the midst of COVID. So if I had COVID or if I worked with a client who had COVID, which I had happened, I had a client who tested for, you know, positive for COVID during labor. And then, you know, everybody who was due in, you know, the weeks after her, I had to kind of think through, well, who, you know, who would go to this birth if somebody went into labor at this point. And with this partnership, we don't ever have to worry about that. I know, you know, all of my clients are, our Sierra's clients, we're, we're sharing everybody. You have a relationship with the both of us all the time. Uh, you get the benefit of two doulas, right? Like both Sierra and I have, uh, you know, different passions, different, different ways of looking at things because we're individuals. So as a client, you kind of get the benefit of both of both of those sides. Um, and then you also get to know who's going to be on call all the time, who, you know, if, if you have a, you know, 36 hour labor, you know, God forbid, knock on all the wood, as we always say, um, if you have a really long labor, you know, who is going to come in to relieve me because I can't be there for 36 hours and, and still be a good doula. Um, so then Sierra is able to come in and she's able to take over at that birth. Um, or if we have two clients who are going at the same time, which for whatever reason, we've had that happen a couple of times recently. You, you know, previously as a solo doula, you would have just gotten whoever, you know, whoever I could get to be on call for me. But in a partnership, that means that you already know who your doula is that's going to come and be there at that birth. Um, so you, you never really have to worry about that. Or previously, when we were solo doulas, if we had two people in labor at once and someone was about to need us, we would have to basically dip out real quick when yeah. postpartum and be like rushing to the next one. And the next one might not get us as early as they wanted us. And the first one might not get to keep us as long as they felt like they needed us. Yeah, seriously. I, yeah. I mean, I remember one time I had three babies in four days and, oh gosh, was I so tired. That was a, that was a rough week, but you know, I, I did, I had to leave, you know, earlier than I would have liked to a couple of times or, you know, even get there a little bit later than I would have normally done because I had to, you know, finish up with this one or catch a nap in my car before I'm, you know, physically able to go walk into the room and do hip squeezes for a few hours. So. Yeah, I definitely find that to be a huge benefit too. And um, like you said about the illnesses and things like that, you know, that happens, life happens. Mm -hmm. And when you guys had COVID and like back-to-back -back illnesses, I think it was last fall, I think I went to like four births in a row of ours. I mean, it, they weren't back-to-back, -back, so it was okay. But yeah. usually we try to do one and one or two and two. And it was super uneven for a while, but we didn't care. And we knew that it would even out in the end. And yeah. our clients benefited from that. Or I've been sick after a birth and then not been able to go to the postpartum follow-up. And then you go to it, or one of us has a vacation coming up and things like that. So mm -hmm. it's been really, really nice. I think for our families, for our doula families that work with us. And then, you know, we talked about how Sierra just comes up with ideas and hits the ground <laughs> running. Why in the world are we now doing a podcast? I have to Seriously. tell this. <laughs> I have to tell that first of all, a shout out to Birth Queens podcast because when I first became a doula, I was obsessed. Birth Queens, Queens is K W E E N S. They do not record anymore, but I loved them. And it was a doula midwife duo uh, from California, and they talked about all sorts of things, and I just loved them. And I thought one day I want to have a podcast. And then fast forward, now that I have this doula partnership, I was able to go get a massage one day that was gifted to me by <laughs> my, actually maybe it was a facial that day, that was gifted to me by one of my clients and it was over a year old and I was finally using it. And I was able to turn off my phone for a whole hour because Samantha was going to be answering the phones. And I, during the... <laughs> During it, my brain was just going and going with all of the cool things and how I want to be able to help everybody, but we don't have time to talk to everybody all the time. And, you know, sometimes people have questions and it's the same question we get three times in a week and we want to be able to answer it, but literally we run out of hours in a day. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, but y'all, she walked out of this massage, and I think Stop. she called me, like, as she was walking out the door. I was like, oh, my gosh, I had the best idea ever, and <laughs> we're going to do a podcast, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and it's going to do this, and all these different things. And I was like, you were supposed to be resting, and instead you were just going crazy in there. <laughs> it's true. And I think it was voice texts. I think I was sending you, like, very I long think, voice texts yeah, of all of my ideas. Yeah. And I was like, and I have show ideas. I've already started writing them down in my notes. I have like 20 episode ideas. And you're like, wait, I'm serious. You're crazy. Why? Why is this what you were doing? And I was like, I don't know. It just came to my brain. She goes, you weren't supposed to be working. I was like, my brain chooses. This is so, how Sierra does it, y'all. It is. And then we were like, this is, it's happening. We got to do it. And you got really passionate about it pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, glad. it was really, uh, yeah. I, I think that for, for me, you know, I, I tend to be a little bit more of a, of, of a thinker. As it's I, so said. True. I, I, I like God. to, I like to think on things. I like to mull things over, but then once I'm committed to something, I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is it. We're going to go all in. And uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's why we are where we are. I think just we both go all in and go crazy with things, but we're so excited about, about this podcast. I mean, yeah. just being able to talk to some, you know, really awesome professionals in the area. And, uh, I mean, we get to learn with y'all and we're going to get to educate and we're going to get to just talk about all the things that, that we love talking about. I think we've made yeah. that joke a couple of times. We spend so much time talking about birth. So having something that we can channel all of that into instead of just talking our husband's ears off all the time about <laughs> all the things that they really don't care about and don't want to hear about. So instead, y'all yeah. get to listen to all of our birth ramblings. Yeah. we That doula that you first did the work for, uh, the first birth for, mm -hmm. she and I joke that we save each other a lot of therapy bills and yep. our husbands a lot of heartache because we at least get to talk to each other and decompress and you and I do the same thing. Yep. And I want to be able to share this information with everyone who wants it. Mm -hmm. I know this, is, this podcast isn't for everybody, but... I think that especially our clients are definitely going to listen and be mm -hmm. helped by the information. And sometimes I get asked questions in a mom group or something like that. And I want to be able to have a 15, 20 minute conversation with everybody, but we can't always do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I found myself going, oh, here, go to this podcast for this and go to this podcast for this. And we can link some of those in the show notes of like yeah. our favorite birthy podcasts. But uh, Midwives Cauldron, one of my favorite. Hey, any of you, Rachel Decker, you want to be on our podcast? Um, I love them. and But I found myself referring out to a thousand different podcasts and yeah. going, people really want to hear from their doulas if, you're, if we're your doula. And I also wanted to be able to um, – I teach hypnobirthing classes. And on class five of the series, which is the last class, I usually have a chiropractor come in from a local – chiropractic office. I usually have a perinatal therapist come in to talk to us about mood disorders and kind of the signs and symptoms, who can get mm -hmm. them, how partners can look out and help. And then I sometimes also have a lactation consultant come on to talk to you about like why you would want to even schedule one and right. so that people know when they would need one. But then only my people that are in hypnobirthing are getting that information. Mm -hmm. And I find myself very often going, man, this person, even though they didn't take hypnobirthing, really would have benefited from hearing this speech or this yeah. talk. And so now we get to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We get to share, share this with so many others, which I mean, I think that's, that's one of the things that we feel really passionate about is, is the resources and the evidence. And we want to be able to provide some of that information all in one place to, you know, to our clients and anybody else who wants to hear it. Cause we do. We have people come in and asking questions all the time, and we just we don't have the time to to you know have a full conversation yeah. and and get into the details with every person. So, our our hope is that through this podcast, we're able to, uh, I guess, kind of bridge that gap a little bit yeah. and uh, just just share some more of ourselves with people. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be great. I'm really excited about it. So we hope that you'll join us for all of our future episodes. I'm going to be the dork. Are you ready? Please like and subscribe to our <laughs> podcast. And please. We, 
Yeah. And if you guys have some ideas for what you would like us to do on the podcast, if there's a subject that you really want to hear about, we'd be happy to get your email. You can find us on social media. Um, go, We'll link all of that in the show notes as well for the different places that you can find us. Mm-hmm. But birthbabypodcast at gmail.com is our email address. So you can send us an email there if you have any ideas or if you have questions, follow up um, to any of our episodes. So yeah. we look forward to sharing with y'all. Thank you for joining us on Birth, baby. Be sure to tune in next episode as we start exploring what to do once you find out you're pregnant. Thanks again to Longing for Orpheus for our music. You can look them up on Spotify. Remember to leave a review, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time.